the story of the Karate Kid is about this young boy called Daniel who moves into a new area with his mother who's just divorced from her father. And so he's a bit lonely, he's missing his dad, and he has to go to a new school. And in this school, of course, being the new kid, he gets a bit bullied. He's trying to find a way to fit in. And the only person that friends him, befriends him, is the uh, girlfriend of this karate expert, this kind of this bad boy, he's like the school bully. But him and his friends, they all go to this karate dojo and they get trained into how to, you know, hurt people. And Daniel thinks, you know, uh, uh, he gets a bit picked on by these kids and he thinks I should start learning karate. So he goes to the library and he takes out some books, you know, karate lessons, and he, he studies it at home and he looks at the movements and he looks at the blocks, and he starts to feel really confident that he's got it. He's like, no one's going to pick on me. I know karate. So he has a couple of books on karate. Can't say it. Karate. And he takes it into school, and he thinks, if they mess with me again, I'm going to F them up. But he doesn't. They find out that he had these karate books, and they take the piss out of him, for want of a better phrase, and they beat him up again. So he goes and gets more books on karate, and he learns more karate from these books, and he thinks he knows what he's doing this time. He goes back to school on Halloween evening, where he dresses as a shower. That way no one could see he's there. But when the other karate guys find out that he's there, they beat him up again. And they're giving him a really good hiding, as we say in London, until this, this old man walks past, name of Mr. Miyagi. Now, Mr. Miyagi is from Okinawa, which I think is somewhere between China and Japan. Am I right? No? It is Japan. OK, right. He describes it in the film as somewhere between the two. I'm going to rewatch it. Thank you. So, but anyway, he, he sees the boy in distress and being beaten up. So he goes in and he sorts these guys out. Because Mr. Miyagi is the karate master. So he kicks their asses and they all run off. And young Daniel says, help me. Please train me in karate so I can then defend these people myself. And eventually, Mr. Maggi feels a bit sorry for him and says, OK, I'm going to train you in karate. So he says, come to my house tomorrow. We'll do an exchange. I'm going to, you're going to do some things around the house for me, some chores and fix up my garden. And in return, I'm going to teach you karate. So very eager, he goes there the next morning, expecting to become a master in the arts. Mr. Miyagi's first job for him is, uh, could you um, first, before I teach you any karate, go and uh, polish and clean and wax my cars? He's like, okay, fair enough, I'm going to get karate lessons out of this, why not? But he's very specific about how he wants him to clean his cars. And it turns out he's got many classic cars, so you have to be very careful with the paintwork. It's quite old, it's quite delicate. So he wants him to wax the cars in a very specific way, by waxing on with one hand, and by waxing off with the other hand. Very specific. And he gave him these very specific notes. He wanted him to do it like that. Daniel doesn't know why, but he does it anyway. So the next, well, after a few days of doing this, he comes back and then Mr. Maggie says, before I teach you karate, I need you to also uh, sand the decking in my uh, backyard. Now he's got a huge backyard and he's trying to make this kind of beautiful garden out there for himself because he li lives next to a junkyard. So he's creating this space and he says, all this decking needs to be sanded down before I can varnish it. If you do that, I'll teach you karate. So Daniel's a little frustrated that he hasn't learned any karate yet, but he gets to it. So it takes him another two weeks, because he has this tiny sheet of sandpaper, and his spares, of course, and a block, and he has to do it all by hand, very specifically, doing these movements, and up and down, and back to forth. Again, Mr. Miyagi was very particular about how he wanted Daniel to sand down the floor. After a couple of weeks, Daniel goes up to Mr. Maggie. OK, teach me karate. He says, oh, there's one more thing I need you to do. I need you to paint my fences. OK, am I going to get some karate lessons? He says, yeah, 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 sure, sure. You'll get some karate lessons. But you've got to paint the fences first, because I need it done very soon. So then Daniel goes around painting the fences around the whole perimeter of the area. But Mr. Maggie wants him to do it a very specific way. Like this, with his knees bent, up, moving his wrist, and down with the brush, with both of them. And he has to do one, 
before he moves on with one arm, and then another one with the other arm. This takes him another week. So he's been there like five, four or five weeks now, and he still hasn't had any karate lessons. So after he's finished the fences, he goes up to Mr. Maggie's house, a little bit angry now, because he's, he's like, I've done a lot for you. His cars are waxed and polished. He's decking sanded down. He's painted the whole of the fences. But when he gets to Mr. Maggie's house, he's going to demand some karate lessons. However, Mr. Maggie's not there. He's left a note and some pots of paint and brushes on the floor. He says, I'll be away for three days. Can you please paint the house? <laughs> like this, side to side. Exactly like that, because it was a wooden house and it had panels. So he wants him to paint it from side to side. So he does his best to do this, because he's not there to argue with. But he's waiting outside Mr. Maggie's house three days later when he returns, saying, Oi, you, where's my karate lessons? So Mr. Maggie walks up to him and said, um, OK, polish the car, and he throws a punch at him. Whew. Daniel blocks it. He didn't understand how that happened. He just did. Huh? And then Mr. Maggie comes forward, he goes, paint the fence. And he goes to hit him in the face. And Daniel just rifts his arm up and blocks it. He doesn't know how it happened. And then Mr. Maggie throws a series of kicks and punches at Daniel. And Daniel blocks in every single one of them. And he doesn't know how that happened. And he said, I have been teaching you karate. You now know how to defend yourself. That's what you wanted. It wasn't so you can attack people. I've t given you the tools to defend yourself. So if those kids coming at you again, you can not get hurt. That was our deal. You've done my things for me. And in all the movements that he taught him, from sanding the floor a specific way, from waxing on and waxing off on the car, from painting the fence up and down, and from painting the house, he had learned all these blocks that could now protect him in those environments. That's the basic gist of the beginning of the film Karate Kid. Now, and that's also the way that I work. What happened was he'd embodied, he'd gone over these things so many times and made them habitual in his body that the memory was there and so they were very natural movements after a while. It's like when you start to learn to drive. The first time you get in a car, it's not, for those that do drive, it's very difficult to try and think about looking in the rearview mirror and changing gear, if you've you know, learnt that way, and looking out and trying to keep your eye on the road ahead and going at, at speed too. It's very difficult. But eventually, once you've done it enough times, your body remembers it and you can start then consciously having a conversation at the same time because your body's remembered it. So all the work that I do um, for performers singers and speakers, and essentially, hopefully with you guys, is aimed at giving you tools that you can embody in order to be your best self, physically, and later, of course, mentally too, because this vessel of yours is you know, housing a lot more than you think it is. And the mind, the subconscious mind, the body, they all affect each other. So if we can do things with our body that put us in a a better position to perform in any aspect of life, we will. Do better.